evaluate the integral RDA over the region D, where D is the region bounded by the part of the four leaf rows R equals sine of two theta, situated in the first quadrant. See the following figure um, below. I think it should say below. But anyways, let's take a look at what this means here. So we're going to eventually integrate here. Um, with RDA. So first off, let's understand what we're dealing with first. So I think the first thing for us to really get down is this DA. Um, so first things first, what I like to do when I'm dealing with any type of problem like this, I like to understand how this R maps. So R is equal to two, sine 2 theta. So I'm just going to write that over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a table here. Now, a table can really give us a lot of understanding of how this thing works. Now, realize this. Since this is 2 theta, whatever I plug in for theta there, it's going to be times 2. So I want to think of smaller values than what I'm accustomed to, just for that sake. So for theta, I'm going to plug in 0 first, and that's going to be 0. And then I'm going to plug in pi eighths. That's a weird number, I know. But think about when I squared. It's going to be pi fourths. And the sine of pi force is going to be 0 0.707, approximately. Now, since we're graphing, approximations are fine for us to deal with. So then the next one I'm going to graph is pi force. And for pi force, it's going to be, I want to times it by 2, I get pi halves. And the sine of pi halves is 1. And then I'm going to do 3 pi eighths. I'm going to extend it a little bit more. And 3 pi eighths is going to be 0 0.0. Uh, 0 0.707 as well. And then I'm going to plug in pi halves. And pi halves is going to give me, uh, when I times it by 2, those 2's cancel. And I just get the sine of pi, and the sine of pi is 0. So I get back to 0 again. And it said the first quadrant. So I just went from 0 to pi halves, which is the first quadrant. So I'm going to stop there. And we're going to figure out what's going on with this pedal here. So what I mean by that is... I'm just going to plot my points now. So first I hit 0, 0, which is there. Oops, let me get a bigger dot here. That's much nicer. I want us to see that really good. And then at pi 8, which is halfway between pi force and 0. And that's going to be 0 0.707. And I don't know if you notice this or not, but... Each of these notches here is a quarter, because when I go all the way out, it's 1. So if I'm at 0 0.707, that'll be just before the third notch. So then when I plot that, that's going to be right there. And that's right in the center. And then the next one after that, and that point is this one here. So the next one then is going to be pi force right here. And that's going to be 1. So that's going to be up here. And then I'm just going to keep going, and that's at pi quarters. Like I said, pi quarters is here. And now 3 pi eighths, that's going to be split between that and uh, pi halves. So that's going to result in 0 0.707 again, so just before the third one. And then my last one is back to 0 at pi halves. So there's just a quick mapping. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how I think of this in my head when I'm actually setting these up. So I think of it this way. So I started at zero, so that's straight across, and it's just zero. But as I go up, I'm seeing this mapping going on here that's covering that region. And this is really what's going on. And then I fill that region up once I get to pi halves. So that's how that pedal is covered. So what, if I look at my theta now for my interval, my theta is going to go from 0 to pi halves. And then now let's talk about r. So think about it. The r is starting at the origin, and it's going in an outward direction all the way to the boundary sine of 2 theta. So the bounds for my r are going to be 0 also all the way to sine of 2 theta. Okay, so there's the bounds for my function. 
And let's get into that DA now. That's what I wanted to get to, but I had to understand this first to talk about DA. Now, since we're talking about polar here, the DA actually equals R dr d theta. So just remember that. And like I said, that R we'll talk about later on that I talked about in the formula. Now, when I pull that formula up, take a look at this. This here is that dA. And my F here for this problem is R because they called it the double integral of R dA. So we're saying for this problem, we're saying that FR theta equals R. So now when I set up my double integral here, I'm just going to write it below here. I know that I'm going to have to have some functions of theta here. And I have my R to begin with, and then my dA, which is R, dR, d theta. And I'm just going to keep it this way. And then my upper bound, my lower bound for R is 0. And my upper bound for R is sine of 2 theta. And then my theta is the integral I'm going to do last here. And that's going to go from 0 to pi over 2. So now there's my setup for this problem. And I just kind of wanted you to see everything together from the actual formula. And honestly, that's what we're really going by for any of these is just our formula. So once you get the formula down, I'm just plugging and chugging in a way. The most difficult part is setting up our bounds um, in polar. So then, doing the integral now, and this is a lot easier integral than some of the other ones I've, I've had already. Um, this is really going to be 1 half r cubed. Or excuse me, not 1 half. 1, q, uh, one over 3 r cubed. Uh, because this together is going to be an r squared. And that's going to run from 0 to sine of 2 theta. And then I have d theta here. So then this simplifies a little more here. The integral uh, from 0 to pi over 2. Remember, it's upper bound minus lower bound. So that lower bound is going to be 0. So I'm going to be minusing 0. But the upper bound is going to be sine of 3, sine to the 3rd of 2 theta minus 0, which that doesn't really add anything to it when I do the lower bound. And then we have d theta. Now this is a, the integral we're going to do now. So I'm going to integrate uh, with d theta here. And this is an interesting integral. Before I get there, I'm going to want to rearrange some things to make it a little easier to do. Oops. So when I, I'm just going to pull the one third out, not to deal with it there. Okay, and then I'm going to peel one of these signs off. Oops, just one. And this one is going to leave me with a sine squared 2 theta. And what I'm going to do with that one here is I'm going to use 1 minus cosine squared theta in place of it. And the reason for this, even though it looks like I'm complicating it more, it's so I can do a nice u substitution and simplify it even more, believe it or not. So this one has to look a little more complicated to get easier. Now when I look at this, I'm just going to do a u sub. So my u then is going to be cosine of theta. And then my du is going to be oops, negative. Oops, hang on, I forgot my 2 there. Don't forget my 2, 2 theta. And my du then is going to be 2, negative 2 at that, sine 2 theta, d theta. So that's what I'm going to sub in for this thing here. So if you notice here, I'm going to divide by the negative 2, and that's going to give me a negative 1 sixth here for my integral. And I'm just going to write the rest of this out because I want you to see it cancel. 
And what I did was, uh, let me just write it out down below here so you're not confused at all. I just divided by negative 2, so I really have du over negative 2 equals sine of 2 theta d theta. And my du over 2. And actually, I could pull that sign under there, too. Maybe I should do that. Yeah, I'll do that, too, because I want you to see this. And that equals my d theta. So I'll just write it in that way, and then you'll see where this came from. Right now, I'll just keep this as a one-third. And then when I plug this all in, I then have 1 minus u squared. Okay, And then on the end, I'm going to have my d theta equal to du over negative 2 sine 2 theta. And then we can see that those cancel, and that 2 I can pull over with the 3 on the bottom here. And that's where that's coming from. That might be a little easier to see what I'm doing there. Okay, so anyways, I'll go with that. All right, so then this equals negative one-sixth integral from, what was my integral for? Zero to pi over two, zero to pi over two of one minus u squared du. All right, so now I integrate that, which is a nice integral to integrate. So negative 1, 6 still out here. And this is going to end up being u minus 1 third u squared, or u cubed, excuse me, go up a power. And that's going to be from 0 to pi over 2. So now, not quite done yet, because we got to get back to theta in order to integrate. So then, I'm just going to pull that 1 6 through. Well, actually, I'll just keep it this way. So we have the negative 1 6. And what is my u equal to? Let's go back. Our u was equal to, and I'm going to write it up here to the right in red. Our u was equal to cosine 2 theta. So now we have to get it in terms of theta. So I can plug that back in now. Okay, so then I'm going to have cosine of 2 theta minus 1 third cosine 2 theta. And that was cubed, so there would be a little three there and that would be from zero to pi over two oops so then we get for our answer here when i plug in pi halves for the first one here that would be two times pi halves which is pi cosine of pi is negative one so i have this negative one sixth out here and this is negative one and then i have a minus here and then for the other one, and I'm going to put the pi halves in there, that's also going to be pi. So that's going to be a cubed. So that keeps the negative 1. And negative times a negative is positive when, I, when I'm talking about this 1 third here. So that's going to be plus 1 third. And then I'm going to take that and minus my lower bound. So for the lower bound, plugging in 0 there. So that's going to be 1. Then when I plug in 0 there, the cosine of 0 is cubed. I mean, even with the cubed, is still just going to be 1 times a negative a third, which is minus a third. And to simplify this a little bit, now I'm going to distribute the negative through. And that's going to give me negative 1 plus 1 third 
minus one plus one third. So then those together are gonna give me two thirds, negative two, And negative two is really negative six thirds, so it's gonna be four thirds negative. So negative one sixth times negative four thirds. They'll simplify, that's gonna be two, that's gonna be three. So then that's gonna be positive two ninths. So there's our final answer. So just keep in mind here that when they just give me that DA there, that we're careful and realize more in polar that we created this R D R D theta. And like I said, that R we'll talk about later when we get to the Jacobian.